Hello Rutbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special Grounded video. Today we're taking a look at more development tricks and cheats and stuff that's going on. And I thought this was really cool. You know in like Superman, he's got his mind palace. He's all the way up in the cold somewhere. Some massive giant temple where he can go and be a little bit respectful and thoughtful about the fact that they ruined him in the DC Universe movies. But... It is also where he contemplates and maybe tests stuff out. And well, the developers of Grounded have the same similar thing. Take a look at their little mind palace. This is pretty much where they can test and showcase stuff off without it being in the world. Maybe it looks better against just a plain white background. This is maybe the start of something, but this is a cheat that you can access using some modding software. So if you're wondering how people have been able to access stuff, you may have seen other YouTubers, pretty much copy of my homework, showcasing a lot of stuff like the water update and bits and bobs. Well, we've all been using um, either a Unreal Unlocker, which is basically a mod kit tool for any Unreal game, or you can actually load it up in the Unreal Dev Engine with a little bit of extra help and you can test this stuff out yourself. So this is what I've done in the past with games like Ark and Conan. I've gone into the dev kit and I've discovered stuff in the files, new creatures come in. So it's always been something I've been interested in. But yeah, today this is just pretty cool. Now these are models I've actually just spawned in. So you can spawn in the models. You could literally make a million of these if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, they're the four models. It's pretty cool to see them all standing next to each other, actually. Obviously, there is a fifth character. And no, it's not Boney. I showed you guys how to get Boney, but it's not Boney. Um, there will be the fifth character. I'm guessing is going to be Wendell. But yeah, this whole world is pretty interesting. I thought what we do today, we're going to spawn in a bunch of stuff in the game. And maybe take a look also about some of the stuff that's coming in the water update. I've shown you guys the water map. I showed you guys that the location the underwater lab first person do it as well but i want to show off some of the actual resources that we're going to be hopefully gathering or crafting or trying to get hold of so we'll take a look at that and also some of the resources that are in the game and just see if there's anything that we can kind of tell might come in the future like what is this what is this like a new type of stone are we going to be able to build stronger bases with it or is it just something that's in the game already and it's just a black stone it's just for scenery there's so many different things so make sure you like in the video really support help I mean, I really like the support you guys have been showing. 130k subs, we've grown like massively in the last few weeks. Huge amount of views, so thank you guys. We're going to be doing content for Grounded pretty much every day from now on. So uh, yeah, let's go. Alrighty then, so there is an actual exit point. You can load up this world pretty much from any time you want just by putting the command in. And then you've got the test hub. And if you go through that doorway, it'll literally put you back on the world. Now I spawned in this quartzite rock. Just have a little look at the model of itself a little bit more. And I spawned in Max here as well. But this was already here. So I don't know what this is. I, I've got no clue. So we should maybe see if we can get a uh, hammer or some sort. Although there's one problem. I've got to spawn everything in. I put it in creative mode. I'm sure I did, but okay. All right, we, we can do that. Let's let's spawn in a mint mallet. So I've got my mint mallet. Let's pick it up and see if we can actually break this rock. Oh, it doesn't look like it, does it? Let's put the HUD back on. So it says invalid one game harvest nodes. So that to me says that it could be something that we will actually be able to harvest in the future. That looks like it is going to be material. It looks a bit like basalt to me or... Um, yeah, I'm going to go with basalt. Now, I'm pretty sure I've also found, like, granite in the game. So, maybe it's granite or basalt. Obviously, we can damage other stuff. Uh, let's not get too distracted. Fawns, that's come in. Or maybe not. Maybe fawns are just, obviously, something you get as a dress piece for the rose flower. We know that you can get stuff from flowers, like the petals. And we know that on the sides of the logs, the roses are the only place that you can actually get pollen, where the other flowers don't actually have pollen yet. So maybe it will be a case that we'll be able to get something pretty cool from the roses eventually. But um, right now, it looks like maybe not. Oh, it just dropped. Just dropped on my head. Oh, there we go. So we have picked up some thorn stems. So maybe that will be a change in the future. You'll be able to get the stems from the roses too. Um, but right now, I don't think you can chop into them. Okay, let's see what else we can spawn in. Now this technically is meant to be a turret. Obviously the model's not there and I've kind of shown this off a little bit but I didn't actually activate it or do anything with it. But you can see nothing's really working with it at the moment. But it does look like this is going to be, in the future, it will be a turret. Yes, I do know it looks like a chair. But honestly, a turret is coming. So this is limestone. So it looks like pretty much just a normal rock. But it is going to be a harvestable item. You can see I'm getting pebbles from it. But I think in the future, this may be another resource. Maybe not. I don't know. But it definitely looks discolored. And if we 
do it, we are just getting normal pebbles. But each time we harvest it, which is a bit different from how we normally get the normal pebbles. When you bash them, is it going to break? It eventually breaks, that gives you 10 peblets. So I reckon that could change, I reckon that might be a resource that we have to get in the future. And same thing, we've got sandstone as well. And again, that looks more like just a, a normal style pebble, but it does have these little bits of flecks of sand and granite inside. So again, breaking it open just to get more pebbles. So that might already be in the game. You guys let me know if you've seen them exact kind of rocks in it, but I don't think I have. I think we've just only ever seen just the normal pebbles. So that's what a just a regular peblet looks like. So yeah, let me know guys what you think that is. Obviously I know it's not that exciting, two new rocks, who cares? But yeah, I still think it's pretty interesting that there may be other resources we're gonna have to go and mine and dig out. And hopefully that means we're gonna get better base parts. That could be something cool in the future. And this could be absolute miles away. Now this one, it says invalid there, but we didn't get any resources from it. I don't know what that one is because I couldn't find it in the little files I've got. But yeah, I think that's pretty cool stuff. Now let's take a look at hopefully some of the water stuff that's coming in, the water uh, resources we're going to be getting. Right, this is the eelgrass. You've seen this in the water. It is going to be a harvestable resource very, very soon. I'm going to need the special type of knife to do it, which is going to be the bone knife or the regular um, diving knife. Again, I've shown this off in one of the update videos. There we go, got my diving knife. Let's equip this. And so we'll be able to hack away at this eelgrass and we'll get eelgrass strands. And it looks like that's pretty much going to be our fibre that we're going to be using a lot of to craft stuff. So you can see the eelgrass is going to be used for the koi scale chest plate. We're going to need it for the helmet and we're going to need it for the greaves. It's also going to be useful for the diving mask and strider skates and one more item that it hasn't actually unlocked. So this is all part of the water update obviously. The diving mask is going to be like the second stage diving gear that you can get. The koi scale helmet is going to be like the third stage or third tier. And the first one is the rebreather. You can see when you actually look at the diver mask, you can see there's the rebreather. And if we go to the rebreather, well, it doesn't actually list it properly, but you get the idea. So we're going to need lots of this eelgrass if we want to make all of our new armors and new items. Something else that we're going to be using maybe is a decoy bait. Now, this is actually an item, it's not a resource, but you're going to need a tadpole meat for it. So it looks likely it's going to be used as something that you can chuck in the water to maybe avoid some of the diving bell spiders or possibly even the koi fish. It's going to need six of that eelgrass and one raw tadpole. And you'll be able to make it pretty easily as well, you can see. And that's pretty much raw tadpole meat's only use. And when we're going to go and cook the tadpole meat, well, it's going to give us lots of food and it's going to replenish our liquid too. Whoa, and the next one that we're going to be maybe getting hold of is cattail fluff. This cattail fluff looks quite large. I think it's going to be pretty different compared to what it maybe look like when it's actually on the floor. But yeah, it looks very different, I think, from what we're going to be doing it, trying to shoot it off of the plants near the lake. And at the moment, you can pick it up. It's quite big. And there it is. Now, what are we going to be using that for? Again, it's all to make different armor types. So the chest plate, the greaves, the strider skates, they're meant to allow you to walk on water and we do need it for the diving mask too. We're going to need three cattail fluff to make the chest piece and three of that eelgrass. And then there's three more resources we're pretty much going to need for these armor sets. Let's spawn them in and see what they look like. So here's the lily pad membrane. I'm guessing this is all going to be broken off. Obviously we'll get it from the lily pads when we break them open. And pretty much we're only going to need that for the underwater lantern which we're also going to need the bioluminescent goop, which also needs the fire or lantern bug. That's probably the thing that worries me the most about this water update, maybe not coming so soon, is that so many of these bugs and creatures aren't being tested properly just yet. If they bring in the water creatures, well, you'd assume that means they have to bring in the fire bug as well. And the same thing goes for the lily pad wax. Another resource we're going to be getting from the lily pads and you can see we're going to need it once more for all of the armors. We're going to need three pieces each. But we're also going to need it for flippers and rebreather too. Also note that the lily pad wax looks like it only comes from the flowering lily pads. So there's two different types. You've got just plain ones where we can get the membrane. But if we want the actual lily pad wax, we're going to have to go for the ones with the flowers. But you can see in the flippers, we're also going to need the water boatman fin and the strider legs to make them. So that's quite a few water creatures you're going to have to kill just to get one brand new armor item. 
So I'm not going to spawn this stuff in, but I just will go over it briefly. We're going to need things like leech sacks. So these are all the creature parts we're going to need. The leeches are pretty, pretty horrific looking. I really don't like them. And the water boatman fin, as I said, you're going to get them from water boatman, which is useful for the flippers and the soup. Strider legs are going to be used in pretty much everything. It's pretty much a level tier two item. And look how many things that we're going to need to craft making it. Flippers, harpoon bolts, diving knife, the skates and the bone knife. We're also going to need tadpole slime. Again, a resource we get from tadpoles, which is going to make the strider skates and useful for the harpoon gun. And then we've got the diving belt, spider silk, which we obviously get from the spiders. And that's going to help make the helmet for the fish scale or the koi helmet. And we've obviously got the bone diving knife there too. And it does look like we're not getting bones from the koi. We're actually going to get the bones from dead fish that are laying on the ground. They weren't harvestable when I journeyed and adventured through the underwater update. But it does look like it is going to be what we're going to be doing rather than maybe trying to kill the koi. I really do think the koi is just one particular boss creature. And the fish scales, we obviously know you're going to be harvesting from the fish. It's a tier 3 item though. So you'll just go up to the fish and attack it and it will shed some of the scales. So that's pretty much all the water stuff. Some of these items I can't spawn in in this test world. I don't know why. I guess that defeats the object. So let's move on to some other cool stuff that could be coming. Now, something else that we've all been wondering about and some of you guys have said you found it. But I'm sure you're getting confused with the honey dew is honey. I mean it looks a little bit thicker than the nectar. In fact we can pretty much spawn in all of them to see what they all look like. So here is all three. We've got that aphid honey dew. Then we've got the nectar which you get from the plants. And then we've actually got honey itself. Let's pick them all up. Now so you know what nectar and aphid honey dew do. But to see the honey here it just says it's edible. And just to confuse us all more, obviously it's not finished yet. We've got fertilizer as well, which just looks like another kind of aphid honeydew. A time release fertilizer pellet. So we will be able to grow our own crops. Maybe there'll be more farming added to the game in the future. That'd be really cool. And again, it doesn't look like it, but this technically is Coca-Cola. It's not just lemon or water. I guess that's the drops that spawn inside the Coca-Cola cans. And finally, we know this is going to be a thing. Well, we think it's going to be a thing at least. If I can get out of it to look. This is a wasp nest. Obviously, it's really unfinished, but it is confirmation that wasps could be coming to the game. They have used it in the promotional art in the past as well. And it's kind of a little bit wonky, a little bit sort of misshapen. It's not like a perfect circle. So it looks like it is going to be either hanging from the floor or it could be on the ground possibly. I'm not too sure. But yeah, it does show that they're at least coming. You can spawn in a wasp, but it's literally just a gnat at the moment with the word wasp on top of it. And at the moment, this is what the bubble gum is going to look like. So this is going to be used to make some really, really high level weapons. Gum steel is what it's called. Can't actually pick it up or anything. And it doesn't look like much, but this is actually resin. So it's a bit different from sap. It looks like we're going to be using it to harden sprigs. So I'm guessing that can only mean that there's going to be another way that we can make bases stronger in the future. So yeah, just some small stuff, but something to bear in mind. We could be getting more resources that we'll actually be able to harvest and gather. Wasps are confirmed and a lot of the water resources are going to be needed, obviously, for a lot of the armors and weapons. So I will be back with, as ever, more grounded content. Tell me what you'd like to see next. Make sure you go and check out all my other videos and tutorials. Hope you found this video just a little bit interesting. And fingers crossed we get more test dev stuff that I can show off in the future. Till next time, later's rat bags.